this has just transpired in the past hour and a half or so. Uh, uh, there might have been fire returned even by Secret Service. We're trying to get confirmation of that. But I'm going to, once we get through all the, all the uh, articles, here we go. Trump removed from stage by Secret Service after loud noises startles former president. He actually grabbed his ear and went down. His ear was filled with blood. Uh, he was grazed. Yep, Trump is safe, Secret Service says, after shots ring out at rally. So praise almighty God for that. Now, I'm going to tell you a few things. Right before he left office, I had a dream. And many of you have heard me talk about this dream before. And I was in a city, looked to be in a hotel lobby or some place of that nature. And I heard two states called out. Georgia and Pennsylvania were the two states that were called out. And this strange emergency phone that was black, that looked like a military track phone, appeared in my hand and I heard the words yelled, call the Capitol. And I woke up. Now, this dream I had was about two and a half years ago or so, and Pennsylvania was clearly defined in it, okay, for a very serious event to happen. Now, at 2 a.m. this past evening, okay, so at 2 a.m. this morning, the Lord woke me up. Every part of my body was being squeezed till I got up. I got up at 2 a.m. I went up to see little Esther, and I went into prayer and I started praying in the spirit. I did pray for diesel too, but I started just to pray in the spirit and intercede. And the Lord had me up at 2 a.m. praying and interceding. Uh, because now, now I know why. Now I know why the Lord had me up at 2 a.m. But I'm going to tell you something. When we set the night of prayer for July 7th, when we set it for that date, right? When, when Eric confirmed this date, Sentencing was supposed to be four days away. When sentencing was moved, I, I had a conversation with the Lord. And I, in my spirit, I'm having this conversation going, Lord, sentencing is moved. What do you want me to do? And he had an urgency. And he says, you need to go through with this. You need to do this night of prayer. It doesn't matter that the sentencing has been moved. There was an urgency to still do it on July 7th. And I knew there was another purpose for this when sentencing had been delayed. Okay. Now, if we put this all together, it sort of makes sense why they would delay sentencing if they were going to try to kill him. Because make no mistake, they want him dead and they just handed him the presidency. They handed it over to him by what they just did. And so the Lord gave me an urgency that even though sentencing was delayed to go through with this night of prayer. That was six days ago that we did this. Six days ago, all of us came together all the speakers that were on, all the people that came on with us to give the prayer coverage. And we did that. And I did what the Lord asked me to do. And I am going to tell you prayer matters and prayer makes a difference when you have corporate prayer interceding six days before an incident like this. Because that was meant to kill him and by the hand of God, it grazed him. Now I'm going to tell you, Saul did this to David. This is that same spirit rising up. Saul attempted to kill David on multiple occasions and never was able to succeed. On multiple occasions. And I'm going to get it up here. Hold on, we're going to get it up live for a minute. Because I want to read this. Psalm 23, 2. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you, O Lord, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If you remember, there was an incident. It's 1 Samuel 19. So let me get it up here. We're going to go to this. Okay. 
there's an incident where Saul rises up and throws a spear that literally grazes David. If you remember, there is an incident in 1 Samuel where Saul picks up his spear and he throws it and it nearly grazes David. And that's when David goes on the run when that happens. Okay. Now, keeping this in mind, keeping this in mind, Mm -hmm. we are going to go to the word from June 8th at Reawaken America that was given in Detroit, Michigan. And we're going to this word because this word was warning of what we just saw happen. So I'm going to read this word. We have the June 8th word. We have the July 11th word. And I have the notes from the night of prayer. And we're going to go through all of it because all of this points at what we just saw happen. And praise God that we kept the July 7th date and we all came on and went into prayer because it was for this moment, that night of prayer. I cannot stress this enough to those watching. I cannot stress this enough to those who were on from the Trump family on the night of prayer and every other speaker on. That night of prayer was for this moment, was to protect the life of this man. That is why that happened. And I cannot stress this enough that that was six days ago. And we see, praise almighty God, That that bullet veered. That bullet veered. Now, let me get up June 8th. Here we go. We're going to read it. We're going to read it. And this is what the Lord said on June 8th. I said it at Reawaken America. And I gave this word. And this word was the warning for what we just saw happen. Who I have anointed will go in the highest seats of your land, says the Lord. Not who the pundits say with their jousting of rhetoric and speculations that are specks of dust to me, says the Lord. Their words have no substance. They lack meat that would nourish the people. Instead, they binge on junk capital food for their souls through the prognosticators, political puppets, and jesters meant to entertain you and distract capital from the people having the clear vision to see the root of the issue, says the Lord. The root shall and will be dug up in a public excavation before the people. For the wicked have mixed in sand with the soil and it has weakened the root. The root shall be exposed by the same measure they so chose to destroy this nation. A great spectacle, an open spectacle, where there shall be no way to escape this excavation for it shall be long and deep, says the Lord. The parties whose root systems have joined Together shall be split and broken by an axe retrieved by one I have called to do so. Okay, we just got confirmation that the shooter was killed. The shooter was killed. So we just got that confirmation. Our team just got it. I'm just breaking in here. Okay. Says one uh, says gunman and one attendee. Okay. Lord, please help the family of that attendee, Father God, in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord. Okay, let's go on here. Now, this is this next part of the word is what we just saw. When fire begins, when fire begins, fire has two meanings, a fire and a gun being fired. When fire begins and grows, there is a great potential for a backdraft, a phenomenon when a fire has taken up all available oxygen and suddenly a door is open that's capitalized and that fire suddenly capital explodes because unexpected oxygen has been made available. Thus says the Lord, that door is about to open and this nation must prepare for the enormous political backdraft that will occur because of a door suddenly opening. That whole warning right there from the Lord is describing exactly what we just saw. 
I, the Lord thy God, have put a hook in their jaw. I have put a bit in their mouths, and I have drawn them in. I have allowed the wicked, corrupt, and darkest of men and women to take on a bridle of insatiable desire for power, and that bit in their mouths, in their offices, in their seats, has led them right in for such a backfiring and reversal. Now, this second part also applies, this other part here. Lots were illegally cast for the days of destruction of political opponents. I'll read that again. Lots were illegally cast, mean the day was chosen, for the days of destruction of political opponents and those who speak truth, where truth is in their hearts. My truth, that's capital, says the Lord. Lots were illegally cast for such destruction outside the legal scope of my covenant and holy days, says the Lord. That's exactly what happened here. They cast a lot. They picked a day. The Lord was saying at the beginning of June, these lots already have been illegally cast. Thus says the Lord, Haman did the same, illegally cast lots for the destruction of an opponent who saw through who he was and the seed of king he so desired. Therefore, according to my word, a reversal had to go forth that caused a series of doors to open that led to a backdraft, an explosion upon Haman and his family. The same has been done here, says the Lord, a gross miscalculation of covenants, times and seasons, a gross miscalculation of their power and pull to hunt down prey in the political arena and the church and have the security enough in seat to get away with such wickedness, says the Lord. They have in their foolishness, in their hearts, thought they could ascend. However, they shall now descend down a steep hill. And upon that slope are the thistles, thorns, and briars they so sowed and have grown to now ensnare them with every charge they attempted to smear others with, shall now catch and ensnare them and tear apart all they have amassed from such treachery, says the Lord. There has been a violation of order, says the Lord, and those who have been charged, says the Lord, will be taken through the valley in order to stand on the hills. Cursed is the man who trusts in mankind and makes flesh his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. For he will be like a bush in the desert and will not see when prosperity comes, but will live in stony wastes in the wilderness. Their flesh has led, says the Lord, in such an escapade to hold on to and keep a grip on stolen property, says the Lord. This nation and land was given to me, says the Lord. The covenant, the promise made from New York, they have attempted to steal such pridefully, that's capitalized, steal such and put it in the house of their God, says the Lord. The nation needs to turn to me in an hour of tumult and uprising. What is the Lord saying at the beginning of June? The nation needs to turn to me in an hour. When the Lord says an hour, it's a short period of time. An hour of tumult an uprising, says the Lord, and seek forgiveness. However, says the Lord, that is still my covenant. And those who have played the thieves for your gods, your gods shall be thrown on their face in this hour, which is interesting because the head of that statue in Houston of Ashtoreth got taken off uh, during that hurricane barrel and shall be powerless to protect you from the wage to be paid you for your sin. This is the last moments before the window of grace closes for such. Repent now, says the Lord, of your heinous deeds. For those who sit on the bench of power shall be weighed in this hour. And their briefcases and filing cabinets opened and searched as it shall be smeared what riches their hands so took and what deals they made to the beast on the hill and a department that has little to do with justice and much capital to do with justifying capital, their detestable behavior. Hearing August, as they cling to the horns of the altar, for the box they have opened is dark and shall swallow up their titles and power and influence, as many will attempt to jump from a sinking ship after all the life rafts have gone forth. Thus says the Lord, align with my will, my ways, and my timing, that's capital. Do not think you know better in this hour. For if I, the Lord, delivered Peter from the prisons and the jailer, I can do the same for those who sing my praises, capital, in this hour, instead of fight out of the flesh. 
The praises of Peter opened the prison doors. The faithfulness of Joseph in prison interpreting the dreams for the cupbearer and baker opened the prison doors for Joseph. And David refusing to kill Saul. Listen to that. And David refusing to kill Saul when he had the chance after all Saul had done to try and destroy him. I, the Lord, protected and blessed David. And by my capital, right, my hand, righteously, Saul was removed. It is a full surrender to me, the Lord God, through my son, Jesus Christ, that unlocks doors of prisons, breaks chains, delivers from the snare of the fowler, and temptation Satan dangles to entice the flesh. This is all capitals, this paragraph. Hear me this day, says the Lord. There is no prison I cannot get to. There is no courtroom that I cannot enter. There is no office in the capital of your nation that I cannot view their foul plots with the stench of such diseased branches. There is nowhere my arm cannot reach to save. Listen to that, what he said. There is nowhere my arm cannot reach to save. It's a matter of surrender, says the Lord. And I, the Lord, am walking your nation through this valley of the shadow of death. This is June 8th. All of this was given from one who came out of the shadow valley, who led your nation into such when the nation did not humble itself in turn. However, I am a merciful God and I shall lead you through this valley of decision and deliverance. For in the valley, when it seems its darkest, there is a light that shall suddenly break through the darkness. And I shall pull this nation from its grip. A table of feast shall be prepared in the presence of my enemies, your nation's enemies, and the enemies of those who I have anointed for such a time. And I shall make them sit there and watch their delicate dainties of deceit be turned over before them. For they have merchandised the political, this nation, and its covenant to the nations of the earth. They have tagged it with a price, and one of the prices was the destruction of political opponents for lucrative deals. I'm going to read that again. They have tagged it with a price, and one of the prices was the destruction of political opponents for lucrative deals to fill their pockets. However, drive your nation deeper into the bondage of debt. My son Jesus paid the largest debt in history, the sins of humanity. And that blood so shall be applied to cancel the continued robbery and progress and armed robbery. Keep that in mind. That just came to me of a nation and a robbing of their relationship with Israel. However, call on me now fully, says the Lord. Doors may close, says the Lord. Weeping may endure for a night. However, joy cometh in the morning. The justice of Yahweh shall carry out the verdict. All men should tremble. And humble themselves and bridle the tongue in this hour. For I, the Lord thy God, want to be the loudest and sharpest voice that speaks over your nation. Your leaders should tremble. For scrolls have entered Washington, D.C. And they are about to be opened by angels prepared to overturn it at the opening of these scrolls. My church, now is your hour to rise up and be the voice crying in the wilderness, proclaiming the way of salvation and leading a very lost nation through this dark valley. You are the light of the world, a city on a hill. And if part of the church wants to die in that valley of dry bones, then continue on my little flock. Prophesy to the valley of bones in your nation that the grave will release its grip. And your nation comes forth from the tomb of Sodom it was so placed in. Know this day I am God, there is no other. A historic and unprecedented time calls for such measures. The sword of the spirit and your faith, my children, is what will make a very broken nation a new vessel upon the wheel of the potter. The winds of change shall suddenly bring a storm that is one of judgment and correction. Prepare, my children, the desperation they so unleash will be what causes their fall. Pride, capital, shall now be their judge and jury. Thus says the Lord of hosts in Jesus' name. That was June 8th at Reawaken America that was given. That was the warning of this event. It was at Reawaken America that Eric told me he wanted to do this night of prayer. It was at Reawaken America when that word was given that we decided on July 7th 
that all happened yes. after that word was given. And so it is so important for us to corporately come together in prayer because the fervent effectual prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And if one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight, imagine what hundreds of thousands of people can do coming into prayer and agreement in this time. If you remember just two days ago, I released a word from the Lord two days prior to this happening. And I'm going to read some of this. This is how the word starts out. And the spirit of the Lord says this day, the pressure has increased, my children. The boiling over has begun. Amongst pressure, there is a release. That's capital, says the Lord. However, only when the pressure is released by an act of lifting or removing a covering, says the Lord. This is moments away from happening, my children. This is the precipice. This is the crucial hour of switches and swaps and flops as the great scramble has begun, says the Lord. That is how that word started out two days ago. Two days ago. There is a great scramble and panic as they have caught themselves in their own net, says the Lord. The pit that they have dug for others has caught and ensnared them, says the Lord. For they are not contending with a man, says the Lord. They are not mocking man, says the Lord. They are contending with me, Ruach Elohim. That's all capitals. They are mocking and challenging my capital sovereignty, says the Lord. They are mocking my capital authority, says the Lord. They are mocking the very existence of what I, the Lord, have held in place since the earth began, says the Lord. I, the Lord God, speak and it is. I am, capital, says the Lord. They are a vapor, says the Lord, a vapor. And that is what their twisted, heinous plans shall now turn into a vapor before their very eyes. The Lord prefaces all of this with saying this is moments away from happening. When the Lord says moments, he means days. He means hours. I'm going through this so I can read to you. Okay. Be ready and alert, says the Lord. Be sober-minded in this hour. For the desperation has mounted that the most outlandish, destructive, and heinous act shall be attempted. This is two days ago. To hold on to a platform that has now become dry sand and is crumbling piece by piece in this hour. I'm going to read that again. Be ready and alert, says the Lord. Be sober-minded, July 11th, 2024. Be sober-minded in this hour. For the desperation has mounted that the most outlandish, destructive, heinous acts shall be attempted. He didn't say they would succeed. He said they were going to be attempted. To hold on to a platform that has now become dry sand and is crumbling piece by piece in this hour. America is in the valley, says the Lord. Yes, it is a valley of decision. However, it is also a valley of dryness, of lawlessness all capitals and i am your shepherd O america i the lord your god am your shepherd if you stay in this valley you will stagnate and fall in this hour there must be a great push of faith to get through such a valley for the pressure system and such is causing nothing to grow and a decaying of what is thus says the lord the government the highest seats in your nation are about to make a very capital sharp maneuver that those of both parties shall look on in shock. This is all two days prior to this happening. As this sharp maneuver shall cause a derailment and tracks to break and wheels to lose their security and fall off, says the Lord. I, the Lord, raise kings up and I bring them low. And I, the Lord, will not, capital, be challenged by men thinking they can circumvent me, capital, almighty God, and keep their seats. For in this hour, you have attempted to challenge and ascend in equality to the throne of Almighty God. In your delusion and puffed up grandeur, you have thought such. You have thought as well, O oh judge who sits on the Supreme Court, that you will be the one who flips and sabotages what I, the Lord, have set out to do. And there shall be a hard capital correction for such, says the Lord. For you have made deals in the dark and have been lured into such, and your foot is one step away. 
from the trap closing, you losing your footing and falling off your seat. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, the high places, says the Lord, how they have attempted to claim territory in this time. You shall begin to see these high places fall in unusual and unexpected ways. For my power capital shall tear them down, says the Lord, in ways that will shock the nation and cause those in their corruption to become very uneasy as such occurs. Now, he goes into countries, different countries, Switzerland, Egypt, Lebanon. He goes into biblical phenomenons that would, would, would continue to happen. And now I'm going to go to this part. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, a double fall within family lines, within party lines, falls in two, says the Lord. This you shall see. For an emergency meeting has been called Falls in Twos. How many people were killed at that rally? Two. Fall. This is why he was warning us in these two words. He, he's been warning us to pray. He's been warning us to come together because of this. Falls in Twos, says the Lord. This you shall see for an emergency meeting has been called. And the elephants in the room have sat with the most boastful of donkeys and developed an elaborate plan. They have moved to distract and switch. And both parties are involved, says the Lord, including those on the high committee, says the Lord. Those two who have been in Congress the longest will fall because of such a meeting, says the Lord. For when they attempt it, shall hit a snag and tear before the people of the nation. And it shall be a crisis for both parties, says the Lord. Both parties, that's capital. Stay in my capital truth, says the Lord, for another sifting is set to take place, both in the church and in leadership. My truth is your shield and buckler. Your faith is your shield. It is the gift of faith that must be activated in this hour. It must capital, for it shall be a light in this valley. And then he goes into idols being taken and destroyed in the, in the Kidron Valley. And then he goes into this. For it shall be a very bumpy tumble off the hill of this nation, says the Lord. A very public capital tumble in three, says the Lord, off the hill. For that hill has been smeared and stained and littered with every detestable thing. To me, where the satyrs dance and the jackals and wolves circle, the hill is more like a death valley. It is not raised up. It has been brought very low. Okay. Let me go on. I was just reading. I was just reading our private chat here. It was a bad night. So we're done talking about the debate. It's time to put you on. Okay. So what they wrote to me is having repeatedly said over the past week that the live face off on the CNN with Trump was a bad night. POTUS today added, so we're done talking about the debate. It's time to put Trump in a bullseye. Joe Biden said that. Joe Biden. He also said that God himself would have to take him off his platform. And he's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. And God will meet that challenge. God in this time is going to meet that challenge. Let me go on. The White House shall be smeared with every charge and written upon it, says the Lord, for the charges are great and the scrolls are being positioned and that house shall shake. Their ground shall shake, says the Lord. Their vegetation shall uproot and die for that ground has been cursed, says the Lord. Cursed, that's capital, by those whose feet touched that up op that operated in rebellion and witchcraft to keep their seats. And then he says he talks about the first lady dabbling in the dark arts. He says, oh, capital first lady, says the Lord. You have indeed dabbled and gone to the dark arts for such instead. It shall bring defeat, says the Lord. For the darkness does not have an answer, all capitals, for my words that go forth from my throne and are spoken into the earth. Yes, the justice of Yahweh, the joy is entering Washington, D.C., California, New York, Michigan, New Mexico, Kansas, says the Lord. And then he talks about New Orleans being turned over. That revival would break out in Chicago. And then he says... Thus says the Lord, around the time of September, there shall be events in tandem. Multiples, that's capital, says the Lord, that are going to attempt to throw your nation into upheaval, says the Lord. Do not fall for the charade or the public parade they attempt to put on to punish the people of this nation. 
For the upheaval shall be a desperate attempt that shall look as if it's succeeding. However, ultimately shall cause much devastation through the branches of government for all three branches simultaneously are about to be shaken and shaken hard. That's capital, says the Lord. For a whirlwind of their own making has turned on them and their already weak branches shall shake and cause much to fall. And then the Lord goes into warning us that the enemy is desperately looking for weak areas right now. I'm going to read this part to you. This is how it ends. This is how the word from July 11th ends. I am God. There is no other, meaning the Lord. Stay the course, my capital children. Stay the course with me. That's capitalized. Do not get spellbound by the prognosticators and puppets who allure you to allow fear and rage to enter. Anger in my capital word and you and your household shall and will be saved. For the enemy is desperately looking for weak areas right now to exploit, to steal, to destroy, to cause chaos. He is attempting any way he can and your authority through Christ Jesus and continually bringing that onslaught of power will stop serious attacks in this time. Let me say that again. He is attempting any way he can, meaning the enemy, and your authority through Christ Jesus and continually bringing that onslaught of power will stop serious attacks in this time. This is the hour for you to keep your sword of the spirit and shield of faith up continually. Do not let down your guard, says the Lord, for I am your front and rear guard, says the Lord. Know this day what has been spoken forth will be accomplished. And that I, the Lord, your God, am with you, my capital children, even until the end of the age. The Lord is with you and will fight for you in this hour. As you surrender and submit to my capital word, my will, my capital plan, so my capital purposes may be accomplished to their fullest in this unique time within the earth. Thus says the Lord, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Those are two words that pointed directly at what we are seeing happen. And in those words, the Lord gave instruction. In those words, the Lord gave instruction. And I'm going to tell you, your shield of faith must be up. Your sword of the spirit must be up because the enemy is looking to steal, kill, and destroy. He is out. He is desperate. He is circling. He is looking to harm. And That is why we have to corporately come together in prayer. That is why the Lord, even though the sentencing was delayed, gave me the urgency to still have the night of prayer. There was an urgency for me to still have it that I didn't understand, but I knew it was there. And this is why. This is why, even though sentencing was delayed, the Lord told us to go ahead with this. It was for this moment. And I remember praying over Eric and Lara Trump and their family at the end after they so beautifully prayed. And I prayed that not one hair on their head would be harmed or their family. I remember that leaving my mouth during that prayer. Now, I don't remember the whole prayer, but I believe I remember that leaving my mouth during prayer. Now, I'm going to pull up the night of prayer because... If you remember, I had that dream about President Trump and he had that big wound in his leg and it was pointing at something, right? It was pointing at something happening. It was pointing at an incident. If you remember, I brought, I brought up first Samuel 17, 45 through 46, except we're going to add first Samuel 1747 right now. So we're going to add because this is the 47th presidency, right? I'm going to add that to this and I'm going to read it to you in its entirety. Okay. Let me get it up here. Okay. So On the night of prayer, I read 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 45 through 46. We're going 45 through 47 now because Donald Trump was the 45th president. The 46 is you know who. And we are the race is for the 47th president. I'm going to read this to you now as a whole. 
And you're going to see prophetically the key to all of this right now. The key to all of this for what's happening. The key to all of this with Donald Trump. And the, the this is what left, I'm going to read to you what left my mouth on the night of prayer. 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 47. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin. You come to me with weapons. You come to me with carnal physical weapons. You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. That's verse 45. You come to me with sword and spear and javelin. You know what he's saying? You come to kill us with sword and spear and javelin. You come to us with weapons to kill us, but we come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Verse 46, this day, the Lord will hand you over to me. Verse 47, and that this entire assembly may know that the Lord does not save with the sword or with the spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will with sword and spear and javelin. They came with weapons. They came thinking they could easily defeat. And that this entire assembly, verse 47, may know that the Lord does not save with the sword or with the spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will hand you over to us. That is covenant. That is activating the covenant. That is knowing the rules of engagement when it comes to touching a covenant that is almighty God's. Translation of that whole passage. You come to me with your carnal weapons, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, which is the Lord's battle name, by the way. That's God, the general. And with that name, it carries a covenant. And with that covenant going before me and coming against you in this order, that covenant clears the way of victory. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. I come to you on the Lord's official business for the day of judgment and rectification has come. For the battle is the Lord's and he will hand you over to us. That's what that means. And I'm going to read to you what I said that night. I'm going to read to you these two paragraphs. That when it came my turn to talk at the end of the night of prayer, I had been praying about releasing this. And this is what God said. I want you to hear closely what I'm about to say. Sentencing was delayed because this is a test. This was 7-7-24. What comes out of his mouth. I'm just reading to you what I said that night. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. As Goliath boasted 40 days, the charges mounted. God allowed Goliath to stand in that valley and boast and blaspheme the name of God and swing his weapons for 40 days. God was not delaying Israel's victory. God was not delaying David's victory. God was delaying Goliath's judgment to allow the charges to mount, to bring an even greater judgment that brought forth an even more incredible victory that everyone knew, including the Philistines, that almighty God had defeated their champion. And he did this for 40 days. Over the next two months, especially, this is what I said to that night. I'm going to read this to you. Over this next two months, especially, Mr. President, President Trump, President Trump's family, you let the wicked, the corrupt boast. You let them come with sword and spear and digital guerrilla warfare because the Lord is not delaying your victory. He is delaying their judgment. So an even greater judgment and victory will come where there will be no question who brought that victory, almighty God. This is what left my mouth that night of the night of prayer. 
And they set sentencing for September on the heels of the High Holy Days, which come late this year. The High Holy Days are delayed. They're coming late in early October, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Once Rosh Hashanah concludes, the 10 days of awe begin, and the Jews believe a trial begins and takes place. And Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, control, c- concludes that trial and brings forth those judgments. The Day of Atonement, where a trial concludes and God judges. Let your walk do the talking during this two-month period, Mr. President. Let your walk be ahead of your mouth. You don't court God. You embrace God. And God then embraces you. You seek his face, not his hand right now. This was all said the night of prayer. You seek his face, not his hand. What does that mean? You seek God and who he is. Just because he breathed life into you. You seek him in all his holiness. You bless his holy name. You don't seek what he can give you. You seek his face. And that turns the heart of the father. And that raises his hand. In order to give forth what needs to be accomplished. When David was anointed, God tested him. Saul chased David for over eight years and tried to kill him on multiple occasions and every time failed. And David had multiple chances to kill Saul and he wouldn't touch him because he said, God still anointed him king. I won't do this. And you know what? That brought forth God's righteous judgment and Saul fell. But Saul attempted to terrorize anybody that tried to help David. Anybody that came near David, anybody that was an ally of David, he went through the kingdom launching a smear campaign against him, accusing him of horrible things to turn a nation against him and then tried to kill him. And David had multiple close calls with Saul and every time God stepped in the way because David was anointed. And the kingdom had been torn away from Saul because he rebelled. Oh, White House staff, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, which you have committed and you have taken part in, and the Lord Almighty on his throne will judge you for. You have opened a Pandora's box out of your desperation. That's what you have opened. And the serpent is going to turn on you now because demons are not loyal. And God is the judge. He is the judge of judges in the earth. And we need to remember that in this time. He is the judge of judges. The earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. When God's hand is upon someone, When God's hand was upon David, when God's hand was upon Joseph, when God's hand was upon Moses, they couldn't kill them. Because God from his throne said he will not allow it. And he rebuked the devourer. And he sent the enemy in retreat. And he raised those men up as imperfect as they were, as flawed as they were, as many mistakes as they made. God raised them up for very specific times of deliverance in a nation that desperately needed it. Let them come with sword and spear. You keep coming in the name of the Lord of hosts. And you echo that from your podium, from your interviews, because there is power in that name. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ they have no answer for. And that power has to be activated in this hour and in this time. Because the political backdraft has begun. This is the door opening that added the extra oxygen that caused the explosion. This is it. We're here. 
The Lord warned June 8th. It was, it was very fast approaching. He warned it again two days ago in that word from the Lord from July 11th. And he warned it on the night of prayer when he had me prophetically give these scriptures. And I'm going to read them again. First Samuel 17, 45 through 47. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, a spear and a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. This day, the Lord will hand you over to me. Verse 47. And that this entire assembly may know that the Lord does not save with the sword or with the spear. For the battle is the Lord's and he will hand you over to us. Lord, let that word go forth over this nation right now and be activated to its fullest and accomplish the purposes, Father, that you have set out for it to do. Jesus. That word has been released over the nation now. Trump family, Alina Haba, that is your key. First Samuel 17, 45 through 47. There's your key. There's your single stone. David took a single stone and he put it in that sling. He chose five stones because Goliath had brothers. But he took a single stone and he put it in a sling, a simplistic juvenile weapon compared to the armor and the weaponry that Goliath and the Philistines had. And he took a stone. You know why he took a stone? Because Jesus Christ is the solid rock. That's why he took a stone of anything he could have chosen. And he pulled that stone back in his sling. And he launched it and it struck the head, the head, the position of authority, that single smooth stone struck that position of authority. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise. The Lord will fight for you and you will hold your peace. Oh, church. The church better wake up and understand the climate and temperature we're in. And stop messing around with people with rainbow pigtails. Who want to dance around half naked and think they're heroes. No, you know what the heroes? The secret service that 11 of them threw their bodies on President Trump. And took their life in their hands to protect him. That's heroic. And you got half the church still playing with fire. Playing with prideful, perverse, toxic fire in the climate we're in. You don't look for a leader that's perfect. You look for a leader that God has searched and chosen. And it doesn't matter how flawed they are if God has chosen them. Because he sees something in them that you cannot. They just handed him the presidency today. They just handed it to him. And this is not going to be their last attempt. Because Saul attempted multiple times. Including launching a smear campaign against David to destroy his character. To make him look like an unfit leader. We have seen all of that. And do you know what's next now? Because Saul's losing his mind in the White House. Saul's losing his mind. And right after Saul loses his mind, he goes to the witch of Endor and seals his fate. And they try to call up Samuel. And he eats a meal with her and he solidifies that seance. And the next day he falls. Saul has lost his mind. Saul is saying the most outlandish things right now. He's talking about putting a bullseye on people. He's talking about, uh, you know, women getting assaulted. 
He's talking about all sorts of outlandish things because Saul has lost his mind. We are there. Because when Saul lost his mind, he tried to kill David. This is following suit with scripture. So we have to understand that next is the witch of Endor. And if you remember, on a broadcast about a month ago, I read from the book of Luke how darkness came over the land in the sixth hour. In the sixth hour. And it lasted till the ninth hour. And I said the sixth hour is April because that's the, the, the sixth month period from the time the war started in Israel. Which means the ninth hour would be July. Darkness came over the land in the sixth hour. Six month April. And lasted till the ninth hour, ninth month from the time of the war starting, July. Which means all of July would be dark. And then you would start to see some changes come. So that this is following suit with what was said about that and what was spoken about that timeline. This is following suit. And like I said, Pennsylvania is one of the two states that were named in that dream when an emergency happened and that phone appeared in my hand and they said, call the Capitol. And we praise God that the Lord protected the crowd, that he protected President Trump, that he protected the Secret Service. We praise Almighty God. We're actually going to pray at the end here. We're going to pray for them. We're going to pray for them. But the shooter has been, we'll say, unalived and taken out. And we are watching this biblically follow suit. These are biblical events. Make no mistake about it. These are biblical events. And praise Almighty God. And he is merciful. And that that bullet was knocked out of the way. You need the Lord's protection in this time. You cannot come out from under his covering. I cannot stress this enough to this family. You need to anchor in the Lord, in his word, and in his protection right now. And stay under his covering, Psalm 91. Stay there. David stayed under his, his the Lord's covering in the face of danger. And danger couldn't touch him. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray right now. You want to, okay. Chris wants to come in and pray too. So we're going to pray. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Lord. But the Lord woke me up at 2 a.m. Every part of my body was being squeezed. If it, it was so painful, but I, I knew what was going on. And the Lord woke me up and I started to intercede and pray in the spirit at 2 a.m. So I understand why now. I understand why. Psalm 91, do not slack on Psalm 91 in this time. I say it every day. I'm not kidding you. I would not tell you to do something that I don't do. I say it every single day. And so should people running for office right now. Be saying that every single day. Because Saul wanted David dead. And in this time, Saul wants David dead.
This is a child protected area. Slow down less than 30 kilometers. There is a speed bump on the front. 